church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Lift up your voice and sing. God gathers us from the north, from the south, and from the east, and from the west to worship him. Will those who are able please stand as we worship God together? <clears throat> Take heed now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house as the sanctuary. Be strong and act. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Let's sing together hymn number 71 in our favorite hymns, Trust and Obey.
We try hard to trust and obey, but sometimes we fail. The good news is that Jesus loves us anyway, and so we can confess our sins to him knowing that we've been forgiven. Let us confess our sins now together. Who's in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus. And Christ lived for us, he died for us, he was raised for us, he reigns in victory for us, and most importantly, he continues to pray for us. Know that in Christ you are forgiven and be at peace. Offer Christ peace to those around you. Peace of Christ. God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing the chorus of thy word. Our scripture lesson comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, and I'm reading out of the message. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all said goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to independently call our own shots. But then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. 
Each of us is now a part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained at one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels we once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot says, I'm not elegant like hand and bent with rings, I guess I don't belong to this body, would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head, would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you? Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, it works the other way. The lower part, the lower the part, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or clothed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. O only, accept, only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. This is the word of the Lord. Let's give our glory and praise to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're coming to the end of our Pillars of the Church series. Next week we'll be doing a tie-in looking at God's vision for the future of Middle Creek Church. We started out by talking about the fact that we needed to be biblically grounded and spiritually based. That without studying the word or having a spiritual practice, our church would fail. We continued by saying that how essential prayer is for the life of the church and that without prayer, our church would fail. 
And then we talked about putting faith into action, that if all we do is just talk about our faith but don't act upon it, then we as a church really aren't functioning. We talked about caring for others outside the church, those people that we meet in missions or those people that we meet in our everyday life. And we talked about showing hospitality just in case one of those people might come in our doors. How would we make them feel welcome? And so finally, the deacons and the session decided that the last point that they wanted to talk about was how important it is to minister to ourselves. Or if you want to put it a different way, how do we live in a Christian community, the Christian community called Middle Creek Church? As we see in that passage in Paul, we see the fact that we are all parts of one body, that not one of us is more important than any other, that if only one of us takes the, the prominent place, then we become like a monster and not like an active body of the church. Living in community is essential. It's essential to our witness. It is when people see how we respond to each other that they learn how we might respond to them as well. If we welcome each other, then we know, they know that we will welcome them as well. If we care for one another, then they know that we will care for them as well. All of us are necessary in order to work together. I loved the line. Which is more important for us, good digestion or full-bodied hair? Men, what do you think? Good digestion might be more important, huh? Even some of us women, those of us who don't have full-bodied hair, I think good digestion may be more important. I'm not sure I and Rhea agree at this point, because you're young. Hair is probably more important. But when you get to be old, Good digestion is an important thing, isn't it? It's important for us to recognize that every single part of our body, every single part of this body needs to work together and does work together for the good of the whole. And that when one part of our body is suffering, we all struggle. I think all of us have had problems with headaches or with a limb that's not working as well as we would like, and it affects our whole body. It affects the way we do things. It affects the way we think. If one part of us is in pain, it takes over our whole life and we struggle to keep going and moving ahead. It's important for us to care for one another, to show our love for one another. If he wants to run, that's okay. The doors are shut. We'll make sure he doesn't get out the side door. And I know that none of these people would care if they saw him running. Brandon's checking out church today, so it's okay if he runs. It's all right by us. What's important in the body? It's important for us to encourage one another, isn't it? It's important for us to encourage one another, that when we see somebody struggling with whatever it might be, that we say, you can do it. We're here for you. We are with you. We have people going back to school right now. And I know that the rest of this church is praying for all those students who are starting back to school, whether they are old or whether they are young, because we are here to encourage you. It's important, in particular, in times of trouble, that we rally around one another and support one another. That's what Christian community does. Yes, you see it in the rest of the world, but nobody does it as well as the, as the body of Christ. We've had many occasions where we have had to reach out to those around us because of the fact that one of us is suffering. And we reach out not just in our prayers, but in our actions. This summer, we were in Bible school during one of those bad storms, the one that was hitting Pecatonica in that area. And uh, when one of our youth, when Leanne Schrader found out that the storm was hitting close to her home, she got very nervous because they had ducks, and their ducks were outside, and she was very disturbed by the fact that these ducks were outside, and they were in a pen, and she didn't know if they would be safe because she didn't know whether there was gonna be a tornado or not. And so we stopped our lesson, and all of us gathered around Leanne, and we prayed. 
for her ducks. Now you might say, well, that seems kind of trivial, but not to Leanne. To Leanne, that was essential. And it was important for her to know that we cared about her ducks as much as she did. And that God cared about her ducks as much as she did. And her ducks were safe. They were scared, but they were safe. And they are still around even to this day. It's also important for us to celebrate with one another. I love the fact that Wendy, even though last week was one of her days off, she brought Harlan here so we could sing happy birthday to him, so that we could all have birthday donuts with him. Because she knows how important this church is as a community, as his family, and how important it was to celebrate together. We send cards off to people who are having, having birthdays or anniversaries, especially if we know that they can't come and be part of our fellowship. We let people know how much we care for each other. But there's another aspect to living in community that we often forget about, but is just as important as all of these helping gifts that we extend to one another. In a Christian community, we are able to hold each other accountable. We are able to look at each other's lives and to recognize even as we are forgiven sinners that others may be struggling with a sin of their own. And we can go to them and talk with them with love about what they've done and help them to go onto the right path. Now that can be a difficult thing and it's certainly not something that we enjoy doing. But it's important that we recognize that part of our community so that as someone is coming to correct us, we aren't offended by that, but recognize that it is being done in care. But also to recognize that we also need to speak to others out of love and concern that the way that their life is going may not be as helpful as it could be. One of the things that Jesus Christ said over and over and over again was that we needed to love each other. And it's because of our love for each other that the world will know that we are in Christ. We can call each other out and we can redirect each other on the path because it's all done in love. The most important thing we need to remember as a Christian community is how we walk alongside each other. You know, that's the Holy Spirit's task, is to walk alongside with us, to be in our midst. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit in us that allows us to walk alongside each other in difficult times and in happy times, to work together towards a singular, singular purpose, to be that body of Christ. We always need to ask ourselves, what difference does it make whether we are members of Middle Creek Presbyterian Church? What difference does it make in our lives? How is it any different than being part of any other social club? It is our love for one another in Jesus Christ that sets us apart, that keeps us going. And when we function as a complete body, we get to see Jesus Christ in one another. Amen and amen. Part of what we remember is what God has taught us about who we are and whose we are. Let us remember whose we are by reciting the first question of the Heidelberg Catechism. What is your only comfort in life and in death?
sing together hymn number 438, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. <clears throat> Well, now we come to our time of God sightings. Has anyone seen God active and at work in your life this week and would like to share? It's nice to hear the voice of little children, isn't it? told you have a God sighting <laughs> or she does I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who raised my hand for him so. <laughs> just that he's here that's a God sighting that is definitely a God sighting he's doing well <laughs> it's tough not being able to do what you used to do for a while but you'll be back you'll be back at it any other God sightings I know Patrick had one, because he had one at the first service, so I'll give him the chance. Yesterday evening, while I was um, attending the Middle Creek booth at the fair, there was a woman who came up and uh, shared some some things about her family, her, her daughter, um, died of a heroin, heroin overdose, and her son, who is into heroin, is, um, is now in prison, and she is, um, has uh, adopted one of her grandchildren uh, and taking care of some others. And, but she had such a great attitude about how God was in her life and, and helping her, and I encouraged her to put a prayer request um, uh, in our in our prayer box and said that uh, Middle Creek Church would be praying for her and she thanked us for being there and and one of the reasons for I believe that we are at the fair is that we can take the church to out into the community and so um, I saw God and in, in how how we were able to do that and God working through us I shared this with Pat and a few of them at the fair the other day. Our daughter, Kim, who was here a couple of weeks ago, she and her husband were on a trip up, and I had a few details wrong. She corrected me. They were in Iowa in their motor van or their motor home. Anyway, she was driving, 
and an inner dual tire blew the tread. She was able to pull off, and they were right by a uh, exit, so she was able to get off a little further on the highway. And Paul had uh, the right, this, uh, we, I had forgotten, I thought this was their maiden voyage, but we had ridden with them to Indiana in July in this vehicle, and she said, I'm so glad this didn't happen then, Mom. Mom is happy too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they was pulled over and Paul was able to uh, get the jack there and was changing the tire. But a man had went by them. They were not on the interstate. They were on a smaller road. And he had went by, went up further, turned around and came bas back and asked if he could help. And But Paul had that under control, but this guy was local, and so he got on the phone and found the place that had the tires they would need. And uh, so they went ahead to that place, and the guy changed. They got two new tires, and he switched all the tires around and worked late, he and his wife. And Kim was just praising the Lord all the way. And she wasn't able to get me because I was, oh, I didn't have my phone with me. It was out in the purse in the car. But she called someone at work, and she said, pray for us. And that lady did at work. So Kim said that was really a God sighting, that so many people helped them. Definitely. Any other God sightings? Our prayer covenant this week is with Al, Jody, Ellie, and Emma Lenkaitis, Cindy Lennox, and Eva Lennox. And so we'll be praying for them that they will see God active in their life this week. Um, we also want to continue to keep all the folks on our list in our prayers and, uh, and those particularly dealing with health issues. Um, I would ask for special prayers again for Diane. Uh, she's still having a lot of emotional issues, and so she's struggling. And my mom is also struggling right now, so I, may I be selfish and ask for prayers for Pat and me as we are dealing with our family members going through tough times. Uh, we would appreciate that. We also received a prayer request this morning uh, from uh, Tom Frawley. His father, Tom Frawley Sr., has been diagnosed with cancer of the voice box, and um, this is the third time he's had cancer in this area. The complications are that he's, he's in a pretty advanced stage of Alzheimer's, and so the question is what to do, uh, because he may need a tracheostomy, and how would he be able to deal with that? So they, he's heading up to Madison right now to talk with doctors and try and make that decision. So be praying for them as they make some really tough decisions for him. Are there any other joys or concerns that we would like to share with one another? Then let's come to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you love us with an everlasting love and that you have brought us together to be this community of faith, to share our joys together, but also to share our struggles and sorrows. And Lord, we pray now that you would continue to be with those who we have mentioned, as well as those who are um, resting in our hearts today. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and for those who are receiving treatments and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. Lord, we pray for caregivers. We pray for those who mourn. Lord, we pray for the poor and the oppressed. We pray for those fighting against mental illness and addiction. We pray for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters. For those who live in violent places. We especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help us. 
Lord, we pray for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church, of which we are only a small part. Lord, please make us a place where people can find encouragement and hope and peace and joy and most of all love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to remind you that next Sunday is the last Sunday of our, of our regular summer schedule. We'll continue to have worship at 10. Then the first Sunday in September, we want to have all of you come down at 930 so that you will come and bring breakfast with you. Bring something to eat for breakfast or a potluck breakfast. We'll be meeting down in Fellowship Hall, and then we'll have our rally day service down there. Uh, the children will be leading us in communion, and we'll be uh, also dedicating our work. So whether it's work you used to do or whether it's work that you're doing now, even if it's school work, uh, you can bring something related to that, just so long as it's small enough to put on the table. And so we will create our... Um, our table centerpieces using objects from our work and then we'll be de get dedicating our labors to God. Uh, so I wanted to encourage you for that. The other thing that we're going to be doing on that day is beginning to, to do a pictorial directory. Um, we had a request for one. Uh, one of our newer members said, I look at these pictures and nobody looks like that anymore because it's been a number of years since we had a directory. And so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do it in-house this time. Uh, Kim Schrader and Karen Finch have agreed to be our photographers. They're going to set up a little studio down in this corner of Fellowship Hall. And so starting on uh, Rally Sunday, we'll have people starting to get their pictures taken. And then for several Sundays after that, and then also they will be traveling around, I'm sure, to folks' homes if, for those who are not able to get out. But uh, we would encourage you to take advantage of that during Sunday school time or during, um, or if you are not a first service person, you can come during the first service and get your picture taken, although both of them are first service people, so I'm not sure that'll work. But we'll figure it out. And, uh, and so uh, just know that that's happening. Um, and then if you want to include other family members who are not going to be here, um, please talk to me. We'll figure out what to do. Probably just take little extra pictures of them. So make sure that, uh, that you get pictures of whatever family members you want to include in, so that we can put them in the, in the directory as well. People Helping People still needs peanut butter and jelly, so make sure that you pick some up on your way uh, grocery shopping. Also, we are still collecting for the Church World Service kits. I think they're going to be starting to say what one thing they still need um, because they've gotten a, we've gotten a lot, and that's awesome. But we, uh, we will uh, be talking about specific items uh, here in the next few weeks. Karen Finch has an announcement to make. One part of the Middle Creek community is the Women's Association, and I would like to read from part of the Presbyterian Women's Purpose. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to nurture our faith through prayer and Bible study, to support the mission of the church worldwide, to work for justice and peace, and to build an inclusive, caring community of women. And the Middle Creek Women's Association is looking for volunteers to be part of the leadership team. And we're going to be having an officers meeting next Sunday following the 10 o'clock worship service. And I would invite you to come and see what you know it's about. Um, if you have questions, 
or are interested in helping on our leadership team, please see me. Thank you. I also just wanted to mention that if you are a woman and you are a Presbyterian, you are a member of Presbyterian Women. Uh, but just a reminder that we do have three circles that currently meet. Uh, two meet on the second Tuesday of the month, one in the morning and one in the evening. And then another circle meets on the first Saturday of every month. And uh, they always have room at the table for one more. As a matter of fact, I know several of the circles are, are really interested in getting more folks. So if you now have, have, fun in, have room in your schedule, sorry, I saw him having fun. So have room in your schedule and, uh, and want to join one of those circles, feel free. If none of those times works for you, but you think you might be interested, please see Karen uh, or Betsy Johnson or Deb Herbert. Those are our leaders right now. And I'm sure they would be able to try and work out another time for a circle meeting. Uh, but that is a wonderful way to get together and meet together and to learn more about Christ and each other through, through our, our ministry of Presbyterian women. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? It's on. Going there. Uh, the fair booth has been going very well, and I thank all those of you who have taken the time to sit in the booth and welcome people up there. Uh, we close up today, this afternoon, or early evening. We'll be unpacking. Um, and then the second thing is we're going to have a booth at the Family Fun Day in Winnebago next Saturday. And I have said I would take care of that, but it goes from 10 to 2, and I have an uncle get, being 85, and they're having a birthday party for him at 2. So I would like to have somebody say, hey, I'll come help you and close it up and take it down. So if there's somebody who thinks you can do that, please talk to me later. Thank you. And the fun fair is at the Friedland Chiropractic parking lot uh, in that area, and it's free. So it's all free. Everything is free. So, so uh, families can go and the kids can go have fun and you can sit at the table or whatever. But uh, Pat has always been very good about, about sitting at the table and uh, we just want to make sure that she's helped this time. Um, Phyllis Tedrick has also done those types of activities and we do appreciate all the times that you have helped with that. Any other announcements? If not, then let's continue our worship of God and the mission of God through our presentation of tithes and offerings.
Lord, we thank you for everything that you give to us. And as we offer our lives and our gifts to you, we pray, Lord, that you will use them so that the whole world might know who you are and whose they are in you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our final hymn I sang to you once as a solo. It's not that difficult. I think by the third verse you'll get it. It's called the Servant Song. Now let's reach out to those around us as we give and receive the blessing. <laughs> the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>